Hi there, so here we are inside Map Info, and I'm just going to give you a quick demo of Voronoi Polygons. Uh, Voronoi Polygons is something sort of um, really put on the map, see what I did there, by um, John Snow, uh, Precision John, uh, John Snow in 1854. No, not the winter is coming, John Snow. Um, he was a physician in um, London. And in 1854, in the cholera epidemic, he used Voronoi um, diagrams to help identify what was the source water pump for the this infection, the spreading of the infection. And and so he, he, he used that process. And um, uh, so it's very successful, he identified the actual water pump. So what, what we're going to do here is, is just turn these points effectively into polygons by using the Voronoi um, sort of algorithm, which is built into MapInfo, it's a default tool. So the idea of Voronoi is, that any location within the resulting polygon is closer to the associated point, i.e. my pub, um, than, uh, than to any other point. That's, that's really what you're sort of, sort of getting at here. And Voronois are also known as TSM polygons. So you can use those sort of, it's interchangeable really, those two names. Um, and so at, really at the end of the day, you're taking a whole point layer typically and uh, throwing it at the process because all your input points get considered in the algorithm and that's really the, the power of it it's the impacting of all the other points it's that relationship and it and, it, and that's all visualized represented by a polygon by an area so let's see what happens i've got pubs here what's the attributes look like very simple but i've got this value called sum value you see so um goes from not to 100 i think it's just a random value it could be anything some value could be a number of deaths in a car crash or could be um, you, you know the amount of um, litter found um, from some crowdsourcing you know litter identification campaign or something you know it's just anything really it's a, it's a number so i've got these points now i could as you i'm sure you already know in map i could add a theme i could do point ranges to these points, uh, some value, uh, change the style, um, make it all red, um, work from red, I think. Yep. Um, and just have these points, you see? So I've got dark red for the higher point. Okay, that's fine, but it's very, very specific as on that X, Y coordinate. And actually my data isn't necessarily pinned to that precise point. Maybe I've been supplied some data by um, zip code, but I've just been given the X or Y, the zip code, or um, or I, I've got a postcode or something and I want to make use of it, not necessarily by using um, actual zip code um, definitions or even postcode definitions. Um, I, I just want to spread that data, you might say, to an area that considers all other data um, that, that's on the, uh, that's neighborhood data, it's on the periphery. So we've got that. So that's one way you could do it. But, but like I said, this isn't very clear to me. It's just these points and I want, I want a much better um, representation of this. So let's turn that off for a second. What you do is you go to uh, the spatial tab, regions, uh, you can go straight to table. Now the objects one, like I said, it's, it's when, you, when you selected a specific set of objects in an editable layer, but we're, we're just going straight for the um, Voronoi table itself. So we're, we're going to take a pile of input points and throw it at the algorithm. So we click that. So where do you want to store these polygons? Well, I'll make a new table. Uh, I want to add to the current mapper and I want to use the exact same structure as Leicester pubs. I've got very simple data. It's just by postcode. So I know they're not, um, so sorry, I'll keep to the same structure as you can see. And, and uh, obviously I've done this before, but I'm actually gonna, um, actually I will overwrite that. Oh, I've got it open as well. Okay, let me, uh, um, I am gonna close that actually. Close on a bubs. That's, uh, that's one I did earlier. Let's go back to spatial, region, on I table, new, add to current mapper. Yep, correct same structure. Run I pubs, yep, overwrite that. I could do the projection stuff down there. Okay, 
Okay, so it, there's no real aggregation taking place because I've just got a very simple data set, but there could be multiple records there, but but it's I just want to keep the same pub name and all the same um, sort of um, value. But but I could be I could be aggregating this this data up. But this is just a straightforward demonstration. That actually goes into an uh, editable layer. That's why you can see all these edit handles. That's where all these little bar squares. You see, look, it's uh, on for our pubs. It's got the edit editable on. So I'll just turn editable off. Get rid of those. So there we go. So these are a nice little tessellation of, uh, of, of of the polygons, tessellated polygons, which um, are representative of all our points. Let me just drag this layer underneath pubs. You see. Now we can see pubs and as I zoom in I would say evidently this is very city center-ish because you see all these uh, smaller polygons that have been created uh, and and quite a few of them so it's a cluster of points which is quite right and then we kind of move out into the country and uh, these polygons get bigger um, as there's no other points on the outside that would have influence on the polygon generation so um, so now what we could do, let's just turn off those, is we could theme these. So we could, I might, so we do, uh, re, yeah, that's fine. Whatever, some value, oh, that says selection. I want the whole lot. Um, there you go. So now we have a thematic of those polygons, of the uh, Verona oh, Tiesen polygons. So you can really get to see uh, a pattern here. And actually, let's just make it see through. Um, so I think that's, where is that, is that one now? Yep, there you go. Let's make it see through. There you go. So you get this, so we could change the colors, make it a bit sort of better really. But anyway, that's the um, crux of it. So now when we click on um, the map, so let's just make sure we get identified. So when we click there, you can see that um, it comes up with the name of the pub and the um, some value and what have you and let's just turn the pubs on and you can see so here you click on that point there's the pubs that's what that is and the boundary has the same data so there you have it it's a, another analytical tool it may be um, useful to you maybe not but um, but it is a good way of really um, getting that, that, that enhancing your, your, your analytical um, sort of geo analytical uh, workflow so when you especially when you start with data that you don't necessarily have any boundary to work to so I, I don't have in and in and that's a good case in point actually if you look at these um, at this Leicester browser you see it's got these postcodes here these are full postcodes actually I don't have a boundary data set that's, that shows those complete um, sort of areas they are there are some calculated ones you can I'm pretty sure you can get off the shelf but they're kind of generated really because there's a postman's walk so what's happening here these boundaries are very much these polygons are, are representational but they are mathematically representational so um, uh, but on a map um, so maybe I should call it mapper, mapper <laughs> Anyway, let's leave it there. <laughs> I hope you find that useful.